In today's video, we will travel to a city that combines water and mountains. We will visit Granada, the city that lies at the foot of the Sierra Nevada mountains and the confluence of four rivers, the Douro, the Geno, the Monacho, and the Barro. General Info The area was settled since ancient times by Iberians, Romans, and Visigoths. The current settlement became a major city of Al-Andalus in the 11th century. In the 13th century, it became the capital of the Emirate of Granada under Nasrid rule, the last Muslim-ruled state in the Iberian Peninsula. Granada was conquered in 1492 by the Catholic monarchs and progressively transformed into a Christian city over the course of the 16th century. We can easily understand that Granada has to offer exciting places to visit alongside with the unique geographical place of this amazing city. Thanks to see, the best way to start exploring Granada is to visit the most popular monument in Spain. The Alhambra, or the Red Palace, is a majestic place where more than two million people from all around the globe visit every year. We will find several medieval palaces, marvelous surrounding gardens, ancient walls, and watching towers. It was home to the Nasrid sultans between the 13th and 15th centuries. Then it became the center of the emerging Spanish Empire when the Catholic monarchs chose to live at the Alhambra. It served as a royal citadel, a fortress, a royal court, and a summer royal retreat. Its magnificent architecture, fascinating decoration, and stunning views contribute to its breathtaking beauty. Moreover, the whole site covers more than 140,000 square meters and includes three other must-see parts, the Nasrid Palaces, the General Life, and the Alcazaba, and all of them are worth the visit. For all these reasons, it was designated by UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984 because of its extraordinary cultural value. Back in town, we can explore the Arab Quarter in Granada. After the reconquest, this is where the Moorish population that wanted to remain in Granada settled, and it's impossible to ignore the influence on the architecture of this captivating part of the city. Granada has more beautiful neighbors to stroll around. One of them is al Qasiriyah, which during the Islamic days, this was the location for Granada's Great Bazaar, where merchants would tout their silks and spices along several crisscrossing streets. Nowadays what's left is a single passageway full of souvenir shops, making it the ideal place to go shopping. Culture On the contrary, as the city was transformed to a Christian city, there is another monument that you must visit, the Granada Cathedral. Built on top of Granada's mosque at the start of the 16th century, this magnificent building is Spain's second largest cathedral. It was erected during a transition in fashion, so the foundations are Gothic even if the main structure and interior are from the Renaissance. To soak up the brilliance of this cathedral stand in the main chapel and lift your gaze to the stained glass windows, sculptures, and paintings on the sides. Next to the cathedral is the royal chapel, the resting place of two of Spain's most important rulers. The Catholic monarchs, Isabella I and Ferdinand II, are interred here and had completed the Christian reconquest of Spain from the Moors at the end of the 1400s. Food. When it comes to food, Granada had some really quality meat options. First of all, we mentioned that the city was transformed into a Christian city from an Islamic one. And the best thing to do in order to prove you are a Christian is, what well, you guessed it, to be pork, as it isn't allowed in Islam or Judaism. A plate that mixes both cultures is habas con jamin. The Arabic part of this dish are the beans and the Christian part of it is the pork. So there you have it, a traditional Granada dish. Another great choice is Plato al Pujareño, which usually contains potatoes, fried eggs, cured ham, blood sausage, morcilla, sweet peppers, and chorizo. It is really delicious. If you want to feel like you are part of the royal family, you should definitely taste Jamin de Trevelas. It is so good that the Spanish royal family had chosen it to be their favorite. Finally, before moving to the desserts, we have an option for people that don't prefer meat. The Remojan Granino is one of the flagship recipes of the cuisine from Granada. It is a salad that combines the acidic taste of oranges with the salty taste of cod. Dessert time, and the first option is churros, a traditional Spanish breakfast or snack that locals usually dip into typical Spanish hot chocolate in winter, although in summer they are eaten without it. Churros are made of flour, salt, and water, and they are fried and served with powdered sugar. Easy to make, great to eat. Another dessert to taste is Pianano's. It's a dessert made in honor of Pope Pittis AX by a baker from Santa Fe. It is a small cake moistened in sugar syrup, 
and filled with toasted cream pretending to represent the Pope's silhouette. Last on the list is a variety of Arabic sweets. The influence of the Muslim state can be found to the most iconic dishes of the local gastronomy. Arab sweets are usually made with puff pastry, nuts, and honey, and locals eat them accompanied by Moorish tea with mint leaves. Festivities For centuries, the festivals of Granada have been very popular. The festivals, both religious and cultural, in Granada, are a great way to discover the city from a new perspective. There are so many significant dates, religious and cultural festivals in Granada. So today we will list the most important ones. One of the most famous events is Granada's Fair. This festival is held during the month of May, depending on the exact dates of Holy Week. The event ultimately takes on the air of a temporary amusement park, with plenty of flamenco symbolism and music at all hours. The Holy Week is also a very important event in Granada. The challenging streets of the Albison Quarter, so narrow and winding, create a special setting for the procession of the Virgin de la Aurora, Cristo del Silencio, and Cristo de los Catanos, are carried along Cura del Duro, with the Alhambra and its lights as the backdrop. In the same way, Granada celebrates the Day of the Cross at the 3rd of May. On this date, the city changes its appearance as streets, shop windows, and squares are filled with carnations to honor the cross. One of the traditions is to place a golden apple on the altars with a pair of scissors inserted into it, which is done to avoid criticism of how the cross has been decorated. The celebration dates back to the 17th century, when alabaster cross was erected in the San Lazaro district, and those present celebrated by singing and dancing around it. Activities If you have some time to visit places outside Granada, then you should consider visiting Granada Charter House. Constructions began at the start of the 1500s, right after the city was reclaimed, but wouldn't be completed for another 300 years. The result, though, is one of Spain's Baroque masterpieces, with eruptions of lush decoration that will leave most visitors awestruck. Another option is to visit the national park that lies just behind Granada's eastern suburbs, as both the highest peak in Iberia, Molhacan, at 3,478 meters, and the southernmost ski resort in Europe. It will only take half an hour to get from the old center of Granada up to these majestic mountainscapes. What's great about the journey is the way the vegetation changes from the scrub of the plain to juniper bushes, wild olive trees, and oaks as you get higher. Outside is a peaceful cloister with rows of Doric columns from the 1600s, and leading off from this courtyard are rooms decorated with paintings of martyrs who met with bloody ends. Before closing today's video, we should remind you of the importance of flamenco. The city vibes with the flamenco rhythm, and there is a reason for that. Granada is considered as the birthplace of flamenco, is probably the best place to attend such an art performance, especially its more traditional form, the Zambra. Thank you for visiting Granada with us. We really hoped you enjoyed it. Liking this video is important for us, and as there are more videos coming up, consider subscribing to our channel and get ready to explore more places.